What's up guys, it's me Kira, and today we're going to go over the basics of how to fight the highest tier character in the game, Fox. Now, Fox may be extremely powerful, but he still has weaknesses that can be exploited, and with enough practice, he may even become your best matchup. Let's just get started. So, Fox has amazing speed, but his biggest weakness is his lack of range. Almost every top tier character in the game can abuse their range to beat out all of his attacks, which forces him to work around your hitboxes rather than the other way around. First of all, most foxes will approach with either a short hop neutral air or a short hop down air. Both of these have pros and cons. Neutral air gets beat by crouch cancel hard. In fact, at low percents this may be the best way to counter a neutral air if you can't space around it in time. However, crouch canceling loses to down air. In this case, you can use Smash DI to avoid down airs and potentially get grabs or other punishes off of them. But, since you're no longer holding down, then neutral air becomes available again for the fox. So, being able to recognize what type of attacks the fox is doing and adapting to them is a huge part of the neutral game. For the most part, you'll want to bait fox into attacking you. Foxes often try to attack in the lag of your attacks, so you should figure out how close you can be while still avoiding fox to bait him to approaching you. Even if he's quite close, you can still avoid him most of the time. The most common baits include making it look like you're running at him, but then backing off just at the last second, and doing an aerial far away enough so that he can't punish you. Most defensive players will dash dance you to oblivion, waiting for you to whiff something so that they can run in and hit you. If you notice Fox is just dash dancing, overshoot your attacks to counter it. Aim towards the back end of his dash dance range so that he can't get away. Fox's full hop is one of his greatest tools, since it gives him alternate angles of attack, and he does it faster than any other character. In fact, most of the time, you can pretty much guess that he'll either attack you horizontally or attack you from above. Marth, for example, can switch between forward airs and falling up airs to completely zone out any type of attack that Fox can do. Full hops are extremely potent and are probably the main reason Fox is so strong in neutral, but his horizontal movement isn't the best once he starts jumping. Dash dance grabs or wave dashing back is often enough to get you out of the way. If he does do full momentum aerials, these are the easiest to crouch cancel and he can't adjust his trajectory halfway through the attack. Foxes that laser camp aren't that big of a deal to be honest. Eventually the fox will have to attack you to accomplish anything, so simply get close enough to bait him like normal, except in this case he's fighting from the corner and can't back up anymore. This means he'll either get hit for free by any attack you throw out, or he has no choice but to attack you, making his approaches even more obvious than normal. You can also punish the lasers directly if you're close enough, but mostly you'll just want to bait him into coming towards you. Fox's standard aerial shine shield pressure actually works exactly the same as Falco's aerial shine pressure, except it happens a bit faster. As we outlined in our Falco shield pressure tutorial, Fox is either vulnerable right after the shine or right after the aerial, depending on how he times his moves. However, as scary as his shield pressure may look, there are plenty of mix-ups you can use to tilt the situation into your favor. For characters that can be wave shined, Fox has to make a decision whether he wants to continue aerial shine pressure or go for a wave dash. This is because he has to guess whether a shine will actually connect on the opponent or not. A lot of the time, you can grab or attack right after the first shine and catch him in the middle of his wave dash. This will force him to go for more shield pressure, which again, has its own holes and also allows you to roll away safely while he's stuck doing attacks. Even if you do get shined, as long as they don't wave dash after you immediately after, you'll have time to defend properly. For Fox and Falco, Getting shined isn't quite as good, because they can follow up with a tech chase opportunity even if they're still doing attacks. However, you have a shine out of shield, which not only allows you more leeway in breaking up their pressure, but can also straight up always beat Fox's down air if you time it correctly. Any character can also spam crouch cancel grab if they're at low enough percent to beat Fox's neutral airs and back airs. Simply hold down on the control stick and spam A while you're in your shield and you'll get some ridiculous grabs. For most of the Fox's combos that don't involve up airs, DIing away and very slightly down is the best way to escape his combos. Any sort of survival DI will allow Fox to rack up those hits and it will feel bad. For his upwards combos, at high percents, DIing his up throw behind him will make Fox work the hardest to get his kill moves, and you can often jump out before he reaches you. At mid percents, mixing in slight DI can also mess with his timings and spacings and make it difficult for him to follow up. If he does land up airs, you can smash DI to escape the first hit, or at least go far enough so that he can't get multiple up airs in a row. When you're stuck in a wave shine, most characters will want to smash DI each shine away from Fox as far as possible, forcing him to be perfect or possibly netting you a counter attack. 
Certain characters that don't get shine very far can also smash DI towards him, as you can get behind him after a few wave shines. While this doesn't guarantee your escape, not a lot of Fox players are able to switch gears that quickly and mistakes often occur. Alright, here's what you do for edge guarding. Noob, Foxes, and Falcos for that matter, will always side B right above the ledge, so watch out for this first. The second most common thing they'll do is to immediately expend their double jump and up B high. This looks good to them because it allows Fox to have the most amount of angles available to him. However, you can simply call this out and hit them out of their up Bs. Foxes will often begin to switch to this if their side Bs start failing. In general, if Fox does get a high up B and you don't hit him out of it, the name of the game is covering multiple options. Oftentimes, you can cover multiple angles by stopping the quickest one with a preemptive move and reacting to the other one. Just keep in mind that depending on the spacing of how far away they are and how high up they are, they're more likely to choose certain angles over others. If Fox ever drops below the ledge with no double jump, you should always go down there and hit him out of his Firefox. This is the most guaranteed and efficient way to end stocks, rather than staying on stage and trying to guess and react to more of his angles. Although this tutorial was mainly aimed towards Marth players, many of the same edge guarding principles apply, such as zone spacing, option coverage, and forcing Fox to go below the stage. As for Gimps, well, the most common options that Foxes will use is either an instant double jump side B, an instant double jump backwards up B, and a sweet spot to the ledge. However, there are a few more character specific Gimps that you can do as well, which you'll just have to wait for in the future. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you learned something, but as you already know, the comment war is here. Last time, you guys voted on which character has the coolest combos in Melee, and here are the results. This time we want to know, who will win the illustrious Smash Summit 3? Post up your predictions, and we'll show some of the winning usernames in our next video. One prediction that I have, that I do already have money on, is that I'm calling that Mewtwo King beats Leffen in winners. He often does poorly when there's Melee and Smash 4 joint tournaments, but when it's Melee only, Mewtwo King often steps up to the plate. When Mewtwo King beats Leffen, to me it looks more like Mewtwo King is playing below average rather than Leffen playing particularly amazing. But we'll see when it comes up. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you next week.